Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I hope you've subscribed, because if you haven't, um, I'll pay you a visit. Oink, oink. <laughs> <laughs> Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, still the voice of hardcore boxing. I've got a uh, Cameron is it? Cameron I think his name is going to be ringing me at 3 o'clock. So, so it's all good. Uh, ring on the main line. I don't like that WhatsApp me for ringing. When you know a person, you can ring them on. How do you spell main? Is it me? Ah, it me. Yeah, that should do. It's all good at the moment. Everything's good. Uh, like I said, we had that little blip the other day, but you're going to do, aren't you? You're going to get little blips, but like I said, the channel's going nowhere, we're here to stay. So, it's all good. So, turn that off. Uh, I'm trying to think what we're going to have a chat about. As I said earlier, in an earlier video, we're going to be... I'm going to have... I'm going to put videos out. Uh, at the same time every night, but I want to do more phoning stuff for your fans. It ain't just about what I think, it's about what fans are thinking. Like I said, there's a couple of people that's going to help down the line with the channel. They're monitoring the situation and they want me to do a few phonings and we're going to see how it goes. Obviously, you know, there's people nailed on that I'm going to have on any time. You know, Terry, Chop and Dharma, Rico, Dale, Smido, you know, but we're looking to get, you know, a couple of other regulars on board so you can put the file all the time. <laughs> what all that we're about? Amazon. So what's it doing here mate? <clears throat> you know when you get a text off somebody and it says call me now, what does and they say yeah okay what are you doing Cameron? Go on on a time schedule. I did say 3 o'clock, didn't I? Here we go. How are you doing? Nice, That's loads better, that. I'm going to stick it on my jar of honey. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I could put it on that's a bit high. How are you doing? Are you alright? What's this here? People will be thinking we're alcoholics in here, won't we, all this booze? Uh, Scotch whiskey, Tully Bardini, is that any good? Must be what they drink next door when they pull the deal off. That's better, we'll get, we're going to get it near, nearer to the speaker. On, uh, that should do it. Go on then, I'll fire away, how are you Cam, alright? Hey there mate. Hi there. Yeah, good. Yeah, I'm all set up now. Go so, what's been happening in the world of boxing, Cameron? Are you okay? There's plenty to talk about. Also, I mean, there's not been many fights on recently, but there's still plenty to talk about. Uh, I mean, what do you want to start talking about? I mean, that man stroked to back. Pardon? I mean, I used to, I used to watch all his videos, Hat Man. Hat Man. Do you know what? I've just done a little video about Hat Man, actually. He's, uh, but everybody in the boxing industry knows that he gets all the exclusives from Eddie and blah de blah. Yeah, but when you get to 20,000 subscribers, you get a phone call from Matchroom, don't you? That's what happens. So, yeah. if you're a disruptive influence on them, before you get to 20,000 subscribers, what they do, they'll do the best to cut you off. They'll just tell trolls to get you to stop them. That means by hook or by crook, you know, people phoning up, you know, people phoning here saying they're going to burn the factory down, people going on Twitter constantly complaining about you, so eventually 
Twitter kicked it off because if they get 100 complaints, they kick you off. Now these people are unemployed, they're all at home all day. You know, I've just had a look at that art man's account on here. He's asking for donations from people and stuff like that. I ain't got a problem with begging. But where is this money going? Are they giving it to charity or are they keeping it for themselves? What are they doing? Is he a profit making channel or a non profit making channel? And why is he behind the camera? That's what I was going to ask you. What do you think about him being behind camera? Well, I like Ultratech and he's behind camera, but he's a non profit channel, isn't he? Hartman's behind, behind the camera. He's getting loads of views, donations and all that, but he's behind the camera. He gets all my two met exclusives, and if anybody goes against the grain like me, look what they do. We know it, don't we? I have a lap of my mate, that man strikes back when he gives a prediction for a fight, he always says, right, get a goal there, but it might go to points, but, and then he says, oh, he always says, but, don't be surprised if it goes early. So it covers all faces. Yeah. And another, I've noticed that. And another thing, right? Did you notice when Umar, IFL Umar, asked that question to Eddie Earn about what I asked on Twitter when I were on Twitter in October? Yeah. And he never read, he never read my name out, did he? Right? And Eddie Earn didn't. And Hatman didn't with this video he's just done. Because they're not allowed to. That's what it's about. So, I have now got something on my sleeve that's a nice surprise for all boxing fans. So get ready for a big surprise. If you thought them billboards that I have put up outside football grounds was good or genius, well, let me tell you this. My next one is a classic. It is a classic because I'm just having fun with this. I don't take it serious. But I think what's happened at the moment, I've crossed over into hobby, serious, and business. Well, I, it's getting that way, are you with me? So, and I'm happy. I'm in a good place at the moment. I'm not out of my head. I'm in a good place, but I'm disappointed with his video. But what Hatman should do. He should come and meet me at a show so we can all see what he looks like. Instead of being a little girl, hat man, you're a little girl hiding behind your camera like a little sissy, you should come out and be a man. Now, I don't know what, no, they're not going to do it because how it works is these people are making a very good living. They're making a very good living, mate, out of YouTube. Yeah. They're making it, he's selling merchandise, they're getting YouTube views, they're asking for donations. Look, these people are making a living out of it, but they're not giving the money to charity, are they? When I did that clothing line with Kay Official for six months, I gave every penny to Josh Whale for his gym to help, finish, to help him finish the bits and bobs. Not giving, I didn't give him that much money, but they got every penny. So these people are not like that, are they? They're in it for money. Now, the way to get money is to piggyback on back of Eddie Earn, isn't it? Yeah, it's like Tyson Fury, yeah, you don't know where money's going, there's no proof of where money's going, is there? They say you give it to charity, but we haven't seen any proof, have we, so... Listen, mate, Tyson... <laughs> Tyson Fury gives seven million to charity, It'd be all over the news, wouldn't it? Hey, yeah. oh, listen, mate. Just, uh, that video you did the other day with, uh, what was his name, Bernard, hardcore Bernard. <laughs> I give him that name. I quite enjoyed that, but it's a bit of a Fury thing, isn't it? Well, Bernard likes feel sometimes when people are fans, Cam, uh, Cameron, they can't, they can't see the woods for the trees, can they? So, I don't know, but... You stop being neutral, I think. Do you know what I mean? Well, look, if people start saying on social media that they've given million, they've given seven million to charity, I want to see some proof. Yeah, I do as well, yeah. And if you do that kind of thing, and you don't want to talk about it, why mention it anyway? Yeah. Now, It grows, doesn't it? The lie grows, mate. It gets massive. And uh, that's what happens. When I fell, do my throw out the other way, you didn't ask him any questions about it, did And what? When Umar went out to America to interview Tyson Fury a few weeks ago, he never asked him about that charity, wanted to do it. 
Now, hey, listen. Omar, right, is the type of guy that puts a tweet out to Tyson Fury, calling him whatever he did, which were very insulting. And then he's the type of guy with his arm round him. That's the boxing industry all over. Rather than just having a straight out fallout with him, look at me and Dent, we have some great fallouts. But I don't, I don't, there's no, I'm not going to not say to his face. Now what he did to Tyson Fury will bang out of order. And what did I say in my video? Expect a grovelling video from Umar. Now did you see him like a little weasel that he is, grovelling? Yeah, I did that, yeah. Little grovelling, little weasel. I think so. Who so, what? I said to him, why are you sorry? Is it just because your job's at stake? I think it is. You know what I mean? it's, it's, yeah, that's what it is, mate. They're, they're only sorry after, aren't they? Because they got caught. Now, whoever did that, right? Whoever did that, it's a bit cold in here. Whoever did that, mate, let me tell you this. They are weasels. It's weasel behaviour. Whoever did that. You know, digging some up like that. Yeah. It's only words. It's only words. It don't mean crap. Look, Tyson Fury said a lot worse about a lot of people. What do you think can happen with him, Do you think they'll get rid of it? Yeah. Myself? I can't. Well, this is how I look at it, right? If he's got a contract with AFL, it's going to be hard because what's going to happen is. Look, Omar's not committed an offence with has he while he's been under contract. No. It was four years ago, wasn't it? Yeah. It so we agree on that, don't we? Yeah. Right. So he's not committed an offence, right? But Coogan, right, is such a company man, he's going to do what he thinks right for his company, which is fair enough. It's going to be bad for business, him employing him. Because if he gets a clump, Right, if he gets to the crack off somebody like Anthony Fowler or there'll be some guy at a show who wants to make a name for himself. Yeah, as well, yeah people want to make a name for themselves, that's what you have to watch out for. So what you have to do, you have to be smart, don't you? Now, Omar, if he had any balls now, he'd come out and do his own channel and just give his opinion on boxing, like me. But he ain't got the balls to do that. He sat at home crying his eyes out with, and writing begging letters and begging texts. He should be a man of man up and say, do you know what? Get fucking whatever, jog on to him all. That's what he should do. You don't let that lot beat you. Because one minute he's walking around thinking he's a star in the VIP. The next minute he's like a groveling little coward. <laughs> well that's what he is, isn't he? He's a grovelling little coward. Why grovel? I've heard something interesting. A few people have said that before he got this gig at IFL, he used to be a bit of a boxing fanboy on Twitter. Yeah, he was, mate. He used to be in the food group chats, but as soon as he got this job at IFL, he blocked everyone, unfollowed everyone. You know, all these people that were supposed to be his mate. Yeah. And now you know that box. You know that boxing with AD, right? Yeah. I know somebody. I'm not going to mention his name, but he's been blocked by boxing with AD now that he's got a little job at the Sky, and that's just what it is. Spencer Fearman got a job at the Sky because he used to be in Ed she Ed Ed Robinson's hero all the time. So Ed Robinson got him a job, 16 hours a week, minimum wage. And they just took it from there, so good luck to Spencer. He worked his ticket, and he knows boxing, doesn't he? That's how he got a job there. Ed Robinson was the guy who jumped in to break a fight up in Doncaster when Adam Smith got punched in my local nightclub. Ed Robinson ended up with his nose broke. Somebody went to prison for it, they all get evidence. True story. So if you befriend Ed Robinson, he's got Mr Bean's hero, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. That's just how we were. Spencer Fearham was sharp enough to know that. Uh, Ed Robinson's a nice guy though. He'd come up to Cunningsbury and drink with me in Hilltop Hotel. I picked him up at the train station 2000 and... 2000... I'll tell you when it were. 
Kel, Kel Brook fought Sanchenko. And I dropped Ted Robinson off. Uh, dropped him off at Hilton International Hotel. I took him 120 mile an hour on that motorway and I'd had a few beers. And he went out and he was saying, can you imagine headlines? <laughs> you know, if I crashed. But, you know, I was pretty wild then. But, uh, yeah, that was uh, a few years ago that when Brooke fought Senchenko. Was well, that 2012 when Brooke fought Senchenko? Uh, I think it was 2013. I, I think it might have been. It was when, later on that year, Frotch for Groves. Yeah, it was 2013 because I went to a press conference and Eddie Hearn gave me free tickets for inside. This is where this myth comes that I beg tickets off Eddie Hearn from Mr. Sporting Icons. I've never begged a ticket off Eddie Hearn in my life, in my life, he gave me tickets that were 1300 quid but he also gave loads more tickets to help for heroes that night, that show, alright, and I said to him I want some tickets for Frotch Grove for me and my missus, this is like seven years ago nearly, and I'll tell you what happened, he said yeah I'll sort them for free, and I said no I don't want freebies, he just sorted me them out for tonight. And I give him 200 quid and he said, no, no, you're all right, Pork. And I said, no, I don't want freebies. I'm not a woodpecker. And he said, go on then. I love to feel the fibre of the fabric. I've been watching too many films, haven't he? And that was in front of Kel's dad and Caldwell and he took the 200 quid off me. And I thought, 200 quid tickets was ideal. I got there and when we got to Manchester, I remember waiting with Robin Reed for that Frank Smith to come and give us tickets. He was only a schoolboy then him. And he gave me, there were two expensive tickets again, really good tickets, so Eddie, well done. But you're still a helmet. <laughs> you'll still be an helmet, so end up on floor. Yeah, you'll uh, still be in the helmets. Talking about Kel Brook, uh, Ross, while we're on Kel Brook, what do you make of this uh, Sheffield card this weekend coming up? I think the it's a bit it's a bit of a no-go like Barry Hearn uh, coming out and explaining why he's in Jeffrey Epstein's book. <laughs> uh, I think that Kel Brook's in a good fight. Yeah. I think it's a good fight, don't you? Might be Luca the Bazooka, that's who he's fighting, isn't it? Well, do you know the guy who Kel Brook fought when he was with Fuki? Yeah. Well, that guy beat Jeff Horn, who beat Manny Pacquiao, so... Whoever's matchmaking Kel for matchroom, I think they're doing a good job. Yeah, it's a yeah. He's been out a year. I just think that this, I think the Kel Rugg fight might be quite a good fight, but I think after that you've got what Kid Galahad in, a, in an IDF final in I mean, how's Kid Galahad managed to get himself another IDF final in What's all that about us? Well, IBF got on with the end, don't they? Plus he had an appealing, didn't he? He had an appealing on the result. So it puts a bit of pressure on IBF, didn't it? But I mean, I was there with that fight. Uh, Kid Galahad against Josh Warren, didn't it? He absolutely stunk out Lee's arena. Who did? Uh, this is a rematch. Uh, I won't be buying a ticket for it, so... When Kel Brook... Sorry, not Kel Brook. When Galahad fought Josh Whale... He, he, he stumped the arena out that night as well, and that's what he does. He don't come to fight. No, so he, he don't sell a ticket either, so... No, he doesn't sell 20 tickets. It's, it's a good job that the Eddie Hearns goes to IBF, just like Frank Warren is with WBO, isn't it? Because otherwise he won't be getting a, a show, would he? Well, all they're going to do with Galahad, they're just going to use him to upset the apple car. He's always going to fight away from home, and he's in our fight. He's got an horrible style. Hardcore boxing fans don't like him, so do I like him? No, I don't like him. Do I respect him? I respect his technique very much because he, that he's he's very he's a very technical fighter, isn't he? He's very he's not in pocket, is he? He's not there to fight. That style that he's mastered is very good. Now, if he had a big following, he'd be a multi-millionaire because he's got a style that. Be very hard to impregnate. Yeah, 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it would, yeah. Yeah, it would, yeah. Well, well, Terry Harper's fighting a woman pushing 40, and she's pushing 24. So if she can't beat a woman pushing 40, there's something wrong, isn't there? Well, yeah, but I mean, this is going to be too inexperienced. No. This, this, this no. Is She'll win by knockout. Yeah, Terry Harper wins by knockout. She pushed you 40, come on. And I've seen her, and I've looked at it, me and a couple of guys, I know one of them were a trainer, we watched it, and we said she wins, so we're going to put our money on a Terry Harper win to play it safe, but I'd have her down for a knockout, but in my accumulator, Terry Harper's to win. So... Yeah. Go on then, get, get him out. What KO percentage is Dorian Dark? What's his KO percentage? and I'll blow him away inside one round and say I'm back and I want the bar. Yeah. The pantomime continues. Good luck to Dave though, he's had it rough but I don't know, I mean if Dave looks bad against Tony and Darch, where does he go? Well, exactly where do you go from that? My argument with Dave is Every time he's in a fight, he says I've had a great training camp, stronger, faster, quicker than a speeding bullet. And then after the fight, he's saying he didn't train, this went that, this went wrong, that went wrong. I mean, are we all monks? You don't know what to believe, do you? No. So, I don't know, but I hope he wins. He's in my accumulator to win. No. Um, oh. It's like if you look at a family meal, the person who sits on the tables, normally quiet one meal, one that no one really likes, you know. Or well, one that one that turns up at end late. Yeah, exactly. Who was sat up front, Cal and Dave? Yeah, I think so. Terry Harper on top table, uh, Kel Brook and Kid Gallagher on the right hand. One well, Steffi Bull on table. Steffi's not going to miss an opportunity to get yourself on telly, is he? <laughs> well, listen, he's done well for that girl, though. I need to give her that fight, so we have to give him a bit of prop. I've seen her and Mark coming out on Twitter uh, today actually saying they thought Kid Gallant would beat Josh Warren, and I just replied saying, Yeah, of course you did, you just put him match real bad. He thought Kid Gallant would beat Josh Warrington, is that what he's saying? That's what Darren Barker's saying, yeah, he's pushing it. Oh, Dan and Barker said it. Yeah. It's a match room, man, isn't it? Not you, sir. Oh, didn't Steffi Bull say that? No, no, no. Oh, Barker. Yeah. Barker's married into match room, hasn't he? Exactly, there you go. Company, man. Dominic Ingalls? Yeah, Dominic yeah. Is it when's he fight again? They've not asked him about it, have they? 
Who oh, want Darren Barker? No, I, I have felt too, mate. Oh, oh, we're asking it, Coogan. Yeah, I think it was Coogan, yeah. Why not? So. The third drug test failure from that gym and they've not mentioned it. Exactly. So, is Coogan Cassis employed by Matchroom or is he Mr. Neutral doing the boxing news? Well, why would why would they do that? Just to, because he look, why why have him on? He, he's he, he, appearing on, on Sky Sports News, hasn't he? He's, his way he's in. what? He started appearing on Sky Sports News, hasn't he? Working his way in a bit. So. Well, this is how I look at it, right? How can a YouTuber who's never boxed give an expert analysis at, the, at ringside? I can't see it, mate. Unless he's there to interview them, but I don't I don't get that. But if he is, he's playing both sides of the fence, isn't he? Yeah. He's playing a dangerous job, you know. Yeah. I think earlier, um, obviously, Kel Brook's fighting this week, and like you said, he should win, shouldn't he, Kel Brook? Is what? Kel Brook should win this weekend. But what, what comes after that? You know, once he beats this Deluca, does he, does he go back down to 147 or does he move up to. 154, or do you think he's stuck in between two divisions, Kelbrook? What do you think? Well, I think they're just going to keep him away from any punches, aren't they? Yeah. So that's what I think. But I thought, I mean, people keep saying he looked crap last time out. I thought that kid that he fought were a good kid. Yeah, he's a raffer. But the thing is, he were over 12 months ago, wasn't it? 14 months. Yeah, so... Well, in my opinion, right, and this is very harsh, right, but I think Kel Brook, Kel Brook is finished. I think he's finished, and if he looks crap, he'll take any offer to get that Khan fight, any offer. And Amir Khan, he's not really bothered about Kel Brook. He's got multi-millions, hasn't he? He's not bothered, Amir. But, in my opinion, Kel Brook is finished. He's finished. That's just my opinion. Dominic Ingle knows that. They're just trying to get the last little bit out of him. That's all it is. All it is. And it's sad to see, because they like vultures, they ruined a good kid. Yeah, I've noticed that, that Sky are pushing for, for Brooke Hans up this year. I've noticed a few little things on, you know, on Twitter and stuff yeah. like that. They, they can push all they want. This year. Right? It just feels like they're going to do that fight this year. Brooke can you know, finally do it. But it's five years too late, isn't it? This is how I look at it, right? <laughs> Kelbrook against Amir Khan. Kelbrook, when he signed with Eddie Hearn, 10 years ago, 10 years, yeah. well, no, in 2011, 9 years, 9 years ago, he was talking about, about knocking him out, Eddie, and knocking him out, Babe, with chocolate brownie, Babe. He was talking about knocking him out with chocolate brownie, 9 years ago. And he's still talking about it. And he's still talking about it. He needs to stop talking about it. And the people around him need to stop talking about it. Because I can't cope with any more of these pay-per-view load of craps. There's only Joshua pay-per-view. Thank you for watching today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And keep on trucking. And then go on telly and say something else, because I will not put up with that. People need to have an opinion. What about these kids' health?